All right, take two as a charm. I did um, another recording of this a minute ago, and I felt like it was too long, so I felt like I had to do it again just to shorten the length. Oh, you mean that? And welcome, my name is Shishanime. Welcome back to a YouTube bulletin and the first one in a little while. And this time it is a valid concern for the Japanese industry for manga and anime, which was also voiced by Ken Akamatsu, the creator of Love Hina. So let's get straight into the article because I think it's a fair thing to talk about. So, Love Hina author expresses concerns to Japanese government of manga being regulated by overseas standards, praises Japan's freedom of expression. Alright, so let's get into the article. Manga author Ken Akamatsu uh, of Love Hina was invited to speak to the Japanese government expressing his concerns of manga being regulated by overseas standards. We are praising Japan's uh, freedom of expression. So yeah, he's annoyed that there's a double standard of what's being said and yet they are still censoring their stuff or changing their stuff from what it's originally supposed to be. Which is a fair thing to be angry about. It's a fair, it's a fair thing to be uh, annoyed about when they praise it. But then they also punish them for it. Speaking on Twitter, Akamatsu uh, of AI Love You, Love You Hina, It's That Day My Santa, or Negima Master Negimaki. I did like uh, Negima, one of the only few that he made that I actually did enjoy. I would say this, I'm not a big Love Hina fan, but I think the author has got a very valid concern. One member asked him how manga can survive in the world. Akamatsu uh, states he explained to them that Japan's freedom of expression allowing manga to be freely created was to its advantage, which it is. You can do whatever you want. It's the same with writing the book. I mean, look at what Stephen King done with all those lines. Jesus Christ. <laughs> However, he expressed concerns that Japanese works could be held to foreign regulation, which is a very valid concern. This would be due to a few number of uh, to the few numbers of large foreign distributors and the publishers dominating the market, an oligopoly. Given few alternative options for manga creators to publish who wish to have thrive, who wish to thrive outside of Japan. Yeah, if they're more um, popular outside of Japan than they are inside Japan, they earn more money. Which one are they going to go to? They're obviously going to try and bend more to the one that gives them more money, so that they can actually support themselves. Finally, Akamatsu uh, states he praised the National Manga Center for preserving the original copies of manga, which in turn prevents them from leaking overseas, presumably fearing the originals being edited or no longer visible to the public. Because of the censorship, he's worried that there might even be a book burning going on if people dare um, don't like it. Which, uh, with today's cancel culture, I can see the very big concerns. I can see the concerns very badly. And it's kind of sad to see that we come to the point where we're burning books that hurt our feelings. Whatever happened to sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. What happened to that phrase? Did they change it to, but, but words do hurt? Oh yeah, they did. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This month, a member of the House of Counselors asked me to ask a question, but a Diet member asked, what kind of message do Japanese comics need to survive in the world? From my point of view, first of all, freedom of expression. Japan has the advantage of being able to create freely compared to other countries, which is definitely true, which is why we all love the anime that we watch so much, is because there's more creative freedom. Whereas instead, you don't have people going over your shoulder going, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do this. That's not there. Although, it's whether it gets published or not, which is another concern, but I don't think that's the point of... Um, this article here. However, as a foreign affiliated platforms become oligopoly, I want to avoid situations where Jap Japanese works are regulated by overseas standards, which is a very, very valid concern. It was like one of the concerns with Funimation actually getting um, um, involved with actual J um, Japanese animation. Like, if I remember, they got, like, some part in a company, I remember? I, I don't know how correct that is, but if somebody knows what I'm on about, please um, let me know a bit more. I don't know enough in those details. So it is a valid concern. Like, the more foreign influence that comes in, the more possible change that the original sources can go through from being what they're supposed to be, which is a very valid concern. Considering that the Australian... Um, uh, what's it called? An Australian representative that I covered a while ago was ranting on about Eremonga Sensei. He had so much time to rant about an anime um, in the most stupidest way possible. And then had his co worker, and then a co worker got investigated for an anime and manga statue, which wasn't even an, a freaking anime or manga statue. 
<laughs> it's all bizarre. What the hell is going on in this time, anyway? Also at the National Manga Center, which was sent off this time, raw manuscripts are stored, displayed, and monetized to prevent them from leaking overseas. The teachers of the members of the Diet were also very nodding. And also, it's uh, Google Translate, so it's not the best translation. The, new, the news comes out that Yo Mizuno, author of and creator of Record of Lawless War, uh, expressed his concerns uh, his own works would be uh, would be banned. Yeah, because of a dark elf character. Can you believe it? I mean, come on. After an episode of Community was pulled uh, from Netflix due to a character being in uh, blackface, uh, attempting to dress as a dark elf. And I don't like the way that they uh, phrase attempting. It's a TV show. You guys are so focused on skin colour. And also, um, it's isn't it only um, blackface when you're doing it to insult the race, if I remember correctly? If I'm wrong, please correct me. I may be wrong on that one. Please don't get mad. I just want to clarify, when is it that and when is it isn't? Because this is acting not to freaking belittle a race. It's to do a character role, for God's sake. Earlier this year, Funimation announced uh, they would no longer be streaming or dubbing into speeches of reviewers as the show falls outside of their standards. They still haven't clarified what those were, even though the anime was later dropped by several channels and picked up by one. It is indicative of how um, an anime or manga may, without a major publisher or distributor, such as Funimation or Crunchyroll, can struggle to be sold in the West if it is deemed offensive to certain groups. And it's a very, very valid concern. Because if they're going left and right, left and right, and get rid of all of these shows all at once, and then banning them all together even though they buy the licenses and do nothing with them who's the people that are going to suffer it's the fans and the people that want to watch it and also not just them but also the the makers themselves because they're going to financially be more crippled than before and also it is censorship it is censorship and i don't like censorship myself i really don't and also one other thing i want to point out is um one tweet that was criticizing Ken Akamatsu, which I can't even call a criticism. I can just only call it uh, freaking a label hell. And the reason for that is this, because um, he's he's working off of these lines here. Japan's forte is freedom of creativity. And then I would like to avoid a situation where Japanese works are regulated by. Now bear that in mind. And now it says, that's a, now that's a very fancy way to say you want to continue to be protected by the Japanese legal system. They live in Japan, you stupid idiot. Of course they're going to be wanting to be protected by their government because they live there, they're residents there, and they don't want their government to be influenced by other countries. That is looking out for their citizens. That is not anything to do which of um, protecting... Uh, kitty fiddlers or being misogynistic is not and rockist okay okay first off the rockist part there was nothing in there that specifies about race it's a worry about change of censorship from societal standards in another country that was the concern you didn't need the other two labels you're a bigot you don't give two dams about japan and that is the main concern. It's actual weebs that are the problem. Like, actual weebs on the internet. The people who do not care about Japanese culture, they're fans of anime, but they hate Japan. Like, they just want to see Japan change so it fits what they want. I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry, little kitty boos, but that's not going to change, unfortunately, for you. Because no matter what, a country is not going to change overnight. And also the views that they have, yeah, they're very more um, free on expression. And also, if you're going to go on that um, kitty fiddle line, why don't we um, just have a look at uh, which countries uh, were the uh, highest, I think, in those cases. Oh, yeah, there was quite a few Western countries, unfortunately. Sure, you can argue about the uh, age range and that lot, but at the same time, with the amount of cases that are lower per capita, it really makes a difference when you look at it. And unfortunately, my country's on there as well because of scandals. And it is horrible to know that. So don't you dare pull that card. But anyway, that was the, um, that was the article I wanted to cover. So what do you guys think? Do you think um, the author, Ken Akamatsu, has a valid reason to be concerned about uh, anime and manga outside of Japan in other countries like the UK, Australia, and America? Um, or do you think it's just um, needless heart worry or maybe it does need changing? Let me know in the comments what you think because me personally, I don't like censorship. I don't like changing things where they're supposed to be. I understand maybe slight 
tiny changes just so that other people would get it or maybe even little notes just to explain to people who aren't Japanese what the hell it is. I don't mind them, that's fine. But anyway, those are my thoughts. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want any more from me. And I shall see you in the next video. Sorry, guys. I will most certainly see you next time. Also, link is in the description below. <laughs> ah, goodness me. I hope um, Japan doesn't cave in too much to Western standards. Good grief. We're all different countries. Just find a way to get along and meet a middle ground, for God's sake.